Welcome back, NFL fans. So today we're going to sit here and react to Black Monday around the NFL. We got some coaches fired, a couple GMs fired as well. We'll talk about some coaches that stayed on so far, like my head coach. Don't know why. But we'll talk about that stuff. Um, we're doing our playoff predictions on probably Wednesday or Thursday, me and Andrew. So stay tuned for that. We'll make our playoff predictions, spread picks as well. Hope to see you guys there. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video and let's get into it. So let's start with the most shocking one today. It's Brian Flores for the Miami Dolphins. So Flores is fired. The GM stays on, which is always very interesting. And it's weird because you look at the Dolphins and their situation. So Adam Gase is fired after 2018. Brian Flores takes over in 2019. Not an ideal situation. Their quarterbacks were Josh Rosen and Brian Fitzpatrick. They start out his first year going like 0-6, 0-7. People were talking about the Dolphins being an 0-16 type team. And they rattle off some wins to close out the year 5-11. So, okay, the rookie year of Brian Flores started out very poorly, but ended on a high note. And guys are playing hard down the stretch for him. I think they had a big win against the Patriots the final week of the year that season in New England. So that was definitely a big win for that team. And he follows it up in 2020 year two, going 10-6. and six. Now, Unfortunately, 10 and 6 did not make the playoffs. And I feel bad for the Dolphins in general. I put out a tweet yesterday that I feel bad for the Dolphins fans because they have now gone 10 and 6 and 9 and 8 the past two years and have not made the playoffs either time. So the Dolphins last year were like the best team in the NFL to not make the playoffs. And it's not really Brian Flores' fault, but for him to get 10 wins out of that team, yes, they have defensive talent, but they were doing like a quarterback carousel with um, Fitzpatrick and Tua last year. Like they were having some games where Tua started, Fitzpatrick came in as the closer it was a weird situation he still got 10 wins out of that team which was very impressive and then this year was a very weird year they went like on a you know one in seven start they lose to Jacksonville in London which was embarrassing they rattled off like eight straight wins or seven straight wins and they were in a must-win game two weeks ago now against the Titans they got obliterated and maybe that really influenced the decision to fire Brian Flores but as I sit here and just look at the records look at the progression of the Miami Dolphins organization it's not what I expected. Now, some people rumored that maybe Brian Flores could be out, but I was like, nah, that's nonsense. He's a good coach. But for some reason, he's fired. And I don't really know why. I mean, of course, my you know conspiracy theory brain goes off now because like maybe there is a bigger picture of somebody else they want. Of course, Jim Harbaugh's the first name that comes to mind. They already shot that rumor down, so maybe not. But you don't just fire a coach like Brian Flores for nothing. That's what I'm getting at. Like, if you have a coach like Flores, you're not just saying to yourself, oh, I can't wait to get rid of this guy. Like, no, he's a pretty good head coach. Like, you're not looking to just get him out the door as quickly as possible. This is not an Adam Gase situation here. So, it's very odd. I mean, Miami, it was not the best situation. Never had an elite quarterback. I mean, Tua is an average starter right now. I have to be honest. I mean, Fitzpatrick had his moments, but he's Fitzpatrick. Um, they had a couple of offensive coordinators, I believe. Their offensive line always stunk. So it wasn't the best situation. Their defense always played at a pretty high level, though. Flores is known as a defensive head coach, of course. So, you know, I don't think it was fair, but it's just odd that that happened. And I'm Kind of curious to see what now happens with the Dolphins head coach in 2022. Who's it going to be? Do they make a big splash or did they get rid of Flores because they just wanted to get rid of Flores? Like, that's the interesting part. In my opinion, there's probably something brewing over there that we don't know about, but that's a wait and see. So it was very shocking news and to see the GM stay was also pretty confusing, but hey, maybe the Dolphins have some bigger plans ahead. Next, we have Mike Zimmer with the Minnesota Vikings. This was never a sure thing to me because... He had two years left on his contract, paying him like $8 million per year. And honestly, some owners don't want to pay a coach that's not their coach anymore, all right? Like, that's pretty obvious. But for Mike Zimmer, it just always felt like one of those guys that kind of overstayed his welcome. Sometimes a guy's voice just wears out on a team. And that's just pretty much what happened there with Mike Zimmer. Unfortunately, you know, he had some really good seasons. He's been the coach there since 2014 in Minnesota. They once had a 13-win season in 2017. That was the Case Keenum year. They once had a 10-win season in 2019. They once had an 11-win season back in 2015. Like, they had some good seasons. They never went worse than 7-9. and nine. They finished this year going 8-9. and nine. And I do think a lot of it had to do with expectations. I mean, the... 
Vikings roster definitely made some upgrades this year, especially on defense. And with Mike Zimmer being a defensive head coach, I really thought this year the Vikings would have a really good defense. They added Patrick Peterson, Xavier Woods to the secondary. They added Dalvin Tomlinson, the former Giant. They got their other defensive tackle back, Michael Pierce, who opted out in 2020. So I'm looking at this Vikings defense like, hey, they got some real talent here. This could be a really good defense. And sadly, they ended 2021 giving up over 25 points per game. They were allowing 252 passing yards per game. They were allowing 130 rushing yards per game. Like this defense had names, they had talent, and for some reason it never came together. And, you know, when he first came in as the Vikings head coach, they had Teddy Bridgewater had the terrible knee injury, so he missed an entire season. They worked with guys like Case Keenum, Sam Bradford. Then they traded for Kirk Cousins, which, you know, it wasn't like the worst move in the world, but Kirk Cousins has a limit of how far he can go in the playoffs. And at that point, he's a good regular season quarterback. The Vikings were going to put up wins with Kirk Cousins. They had one playoff win, I believe. Then they got murdered in San Francisco the next week, I remember. But still, they put up wins with Kirk Cousins, but it just was not enough to bring them over the top. And as I said, sometimes a guy's voice just wears on too long, and sometimes guys outgrow it. And this Vikings core has been there for a long time. Some guys have recently moved on. You know, guys like Everson Griffin, Linval Joseph, guys that have been there for a while, you know, guys have moved on by now. So this Vikings core has to get younger. I mean, Kirk Cousins is probably there in 2022 because of his contract. But at some point, this team has to move in a different direction. They have pieces, of course. They have really good players. Eric Kendricks. They have Anthony Barr still. They have Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson. Like, they have talented players. It just came down to they could not find the right quarterback. Their offensive line usually had issues. Some guys couldn't stay healthy. The defense underperformed this year especially. So it's unfortunate. And it kind of reminded me of like 2015 Tom Coughlin so the Giants in 2015 Coughlin's last year they lost so many close games like so many games lost by three points four points one point and this was another instance of a Vikings team that if a couple things went differently could have easily been a 10 or 11 win team like the Vikings had talent they were a good team throughout most of the year you just look up and down the schedule week one overtime loss versus the Bengals I think they missed a couple field goals in that game a loss at Arizona where they missed a field goal. I remember it was like a 36-yard game-winning field goal. They missed it. Um, they lost 14-7 to Cleveland. Lost in overtime versus Baltimore, which is a game I forget, but still they lost by uh, three points in that one. They lost to Detroit by two. That's a killer. Losing to the Lions by two was an absolute killer. Lost to the Rams by seven. So, like They were keeping it competitive for a lot of these games. The first two weeks is what really led to the demise of, um, of Mike Zimmer. So it's unfortunate, but as I said, some head coaches just overstay their welcome, and that's kind of the fate that Mike Zimmer had to face. So it is what it is. It happens, and I'm sure if he wants, he can be a defensive coordinator somewhere else. But as for being a head coach, I don't know. He's 65 years old now. Does the team want to take that risk? I mean, maybe, but it's not really the most likely outcome. But their GM also got fired. Rick Spielman, I think he's been there since 2012, and he drafted some good players. You look up and down the Vikings roster the past like decade or so, some very good players there. Unfortunately, it never worked out. Never had an elite quarterback, you know, since Brett Favre left, honestly, and they lost the NFC Championship game back in, I think, 2009, 10, whatever that was. So that was a while ago. But yeah, I mean, they've been missing that franchise quarterback for a while. They were hoping it was Teddy Bridgewater, got the injury, you know, trade for Kirk Cousins, rest is history. So it's unfortunate, and they still got to find their guy for the future. I, I still think Cousins is back for 2022, but at some point, the Vikings have to find a quarterback that can get them over the top because they've had too many talented rosters here to be first and second round playoff exits every single year. Next, we have the Chicago Bears. Their are GM and head coach are gone so Ryan Pace the GM Matt Nagy the head coach are both fired of course from the Chicago Bears and you know the tenure of Matt Nagy is an interesting one of course he came over from the Chiefs in 2017 or 2018 I should say uh, the former offensive coordinator there next to Andy Reid and he came over and all of a sudden Mitch Trubisky was playing good football and like it just directly correlated when Matt Nagy came over Mitch Trubisky looked like a pretty good NFL quarterback. Then, unfortunately, Mitch Trubisky started to decline, and it got worse and worse. But, like, just record-wise, Chicago wasn't that bad. I do believe in 2018, which was Matt Nagy's first year, he won Coach of the Year. The Bears went 12-4. They lost in the wild card round. I think that was a double-doink game against the Eagles. I'm pretty sure it was, so the kicker kind of effed them over there. But, anyway... In his third year, they lost a wild card game. They went 8-8, eight and eight, but they made the playoffs, lost a wild card uh, at the Saints, I believe, last year in 2020. But Matt Nagy, record-wise, was 12-4, 8-8, 8-8 again, and then 6-11 and this year. But 
for most logical fans, especially Bears fans, you had to realize that coming into 2021 with Andy Dalton and rookie Justin Fields, it probably wasn't going to be a fantastic year. I think people should have had their expectations a bit lowered. And coming into this year, Matt Nagy was definitely on the hot seat. Maybe the Bears did not see the development from Justin Fields that they wanted to. Maybe the win column wasn't good enough. I don't know. But Matt Nagy was a guy that a lot of Bears fans wanted fired. And I don't think he's that bad of a coach, like a play caller. Like I, It kind of reminds me of Pat Shermer as I make another Giants connection. Pat Shermer for the Giants was a fine play caller, offensive play caller, but not head coach material. And for Matt Nagy, I mean, of course, he had his play calling duties taken away a couple times or he gave it away. So that's not a good look. But he did give Mitch Trubisky a couple of pretty damn good seasons. So as a play caller, Matt Nagy can't be that terrible. Like I want to go through some of Mitch Trubisky's years with Matt Nagy as his head coach. Now, Trubisky played 2017 and Matt Nagy was not there yet. That was like Jim Fox I believe, or John Fox. That was with John Fox. He had a, you know, seven to seven touchdown interception ratio, 59 completion percentage as a rookie. And then Matt Nagy comes in in 2018 and all of a sudden Mitch Trubisky is a very respectable quarterback. He upped his completion percentage by 7%. He improved his touchdowns from 7 to 24. He had 12 interceptions, which is really not that bad for a full season. He was 11-3 and as a starter. Of course, the Bears defense carried them. We get that. But Mitch Trubisky in 2018 was a fine league average starting quarterback. Then in 2019, kind of fell off a little bit. 17-10 to touchdown interception ratio. Completion percentage dropped a few points. Okay, not great. But like 2020, his numbers went up a little bit it was confusing so obviously Trubisky was not a franchise quarterback they had to move on and I feel bad for Justin Fields like this regime was the regime that believed in him they took him they traded up in the draft for him with the Giants they took him 11th overall and now both guys are gone and Justin Fields are probably sitting there like huh well you know why'd you guys draft me like you guys took me to be your future franchise quarterback and now both guys who wanted me are gone so it's probably a weird spot for Justin Fields to be in and now for the next GM and head coach that take over, they probably have to work with Justin Fields, whether they like it or not. So that's a very interesting case. I kind of thought maybe Matt Nagy should have been fired last year. Same for Ryan Pace, but they waited a year and, and obviously not much changed. They're both fired a year later. So that's pretty unfortunate. But Chicago, look, they always had a good defense there. Their offense was never able to take them over the top. If their offense was able to match their defense, they could have been real Super Bowl contenders. But you really can't go that far with Mitch Trubisky. And then you have Chase Daniels sometimes. Some, you know, they they had Andy Dalton this year. They had rookie Justin Fields once again. So it wasn't really possible to make a Super Bowl run. But for Matt Nagy to make the playoffs twice out of four years and to have Mitch Trubisky have like a couple of very respectable years, it's pretty impressive. I think Matt Nagy will be an offensive coordinator somewhere. Not sure where exactly. I do think, I will say right now, if Joe Judge remains the Giants head coach, I can definitely see him going to the Giants as an OC. That makes a lot of sense. Those guys had an extended conversation after the Week 17 Bears-Giants game. Matt Nagy's from Donnellan, New Jersey, so in the area. I definitely could see it happening, so that's something to keep an eye on, but you know, as for Nagy, he'll probably land on his feet elsewhere. He might get a head coaching job in the future. Not positive. Might have to wait a little bit, but it is possible. He's still a pretty young guy for the most part. So it's unfortunate that, you know, it didn't work out. But as for the Bears, their head coach and GM, they are out the door. So lastly, we have Vic Fangio, who was now the former head coach of the Denver Broncos. Another guy that I think will land on his feet somewhere as a defensive coordinator because this man's a defensive coach coming from Chicago, ironically. But, you know, the Broncos this year, looking at it, were third best in the NFL at giving up points on defense. Like, they had a good defense despite some of, you know, losing Von Miller. Bradley Chubb was injured. Like, they had some things go against them, but they still found a way to put up really good defensive numbers this year. So, you know, it's kind of unfair in my opinion that Vic Fangio was fired, and I do think he's a pretty good coach. I, I don't know exactly if this is the right choice by Denver, but... The man also suffered from not having a good offense to go along with his good defense because his quarterbacks were Joe Flacco in his mid-30s. They had Drew Locke, of course, who wasn't really that great, and Teddy Bridgewater. So, you know, that's an issue, of course. Just looking at the Broncos' defense, they were 8th in total defense this year. They were 21st in 2020, a bit of a drop-off, of course. But then in his first year, they were 12th in total defense. So Vic Fangio was supposed to come there to be a good head coach and have a good defense. And I don't think he really, like failed at that I, I think for the most part Vic Fangio is just once again a victim of a bad offense and I, I do feel bad of course you know the Broncos have not figured out the quarterback situation since Peyton Manning left so not really his fault but I mean my goodness I mean I, I feel like whoever gets him as a defensive coordinator is getting a very good coach so 
you know, it's a shame it didn't work out in Denver. They had some talent there, of course. And Denver's the perfect example of a team that's a quarterback away. I mean, if you put a quarterback that's good on the Denver Broncos, let's put Aaron Rodgers on the Broncos right now. That's probably, what, a 12, 13-win team? Like, they are very good up and down. So um, it is sad. And, you know, they had some close losses this year, of course. Their last game, of course, they lost by four to the uh, Chiefs. So that's a shame, of course. And, you know, Teddy Bridgewater is like a journeyman quarterback now. And Drew Locke, I think he's a talented guy, but makes a lot of bad decisions. Joe Flacco, towards the end of his career, has not been, like, that great. You know, he's not the uh, Baltimore Ravens Joe Flacco, that's for sure. So... Yeah, I mean, the guy never had a real quarterback. They had receivers. They had running backs. They had talented, skilled players. No offense, but, you know, the offensive line was a questionable one for the first couple years for Fangio. It finally got kind of good this year, I think. So, I don't know. I just feel like the guy had a bad offense, and I can't really completely blame him, but but someone's got to take the blame. That's how it is. And when you're a head coach, sometimes the blame goes on you. So, I do think Fangio maybe at some point in the future is a head coach once again. I'm not sure how old he is. Let me look real quick. He is 63. So I mean, look, maybe that's pushing it a bit, but I I could see him getting another opportunity. It's not impossible, but I do think as a defensive coordinator, if he wants to, he can definitely go somewhere and be a defensive coordinator. So we'll find out, but I do feel bad for him. I don't think it was his fault directly that the Broncos never had a great season under him for three years, but once again, someone's got to take the blame. So it is what it is. And once he moves on somewhere, that team's going to be lucky. So but I feel bad for Fangio, but when you don't have a quarterback, that's kind of the uh, the outcome sometimes. We know that. So as for coaches not fired real quickly, so Joe Judge is still kind of up in the air. It sounded like around noon today, he was definitely coming back. Then they've kind of retracted those statements. There is meetings going on, of course. The Giants are interviewing new GMs. So Joe Judge is still up in the air, of course. We'll find out. I want him gone as a Giants fan, but we'll see about that. Pete Carroll, nothing new there. I mean, it seems like he's going to stay. So Pete Carroll earns himself an extra year. I did think it'd be him or Russell Wilson leaving. I thought one of those guys would at least leave. So if Pete's back, is Russell Wilson back? I mean, maybe. I don't know. I I do want to see Wilson traded just for the fun of it. Like, I think having Wilson on the Saints or, of course, the Giants would be great or even the Broncos. Like, that would be an awesome storyline, of course. I don't think Seattle is that great of a roster right now. So I do want to see Russell Wilson try and win a Super Bowl elsewhere. But I'm not saying the Giants would do that, but still the Broncos and the Saints can definitely put them in Super Bowl contention. So um, maybe that happens. As for the uh, Texans, David Coley, he was not fired. There were some rumors about that. I felt bad for Coley because, you know, taking over that Texans head coach job was like the worst opportunity in the world. Like nobody wanted to coach that team. And, you know, the Texans still played hard. There were games that got blown out, of course. But but even last week, they ended on like a nice run in the second half. They almost came back and tied it versus uh, the Titans. So, you know, that was a nice job by them to come back. Davis Mills looked a lot better, of course, the second half of the year once he took over for Tyrod once again. So, I don't know. David Culley might earn himself a second year. We'll see about that. But, you know, as for Joe Judge, it's still up in the air, and we'll find out about that in the coming days. But that'll do it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'm sure some of these guys will land on their feet and coach elsewhere. I'm sure guys like Fangio and guys like Nagy will be coordinators somewhere. And a guy like Brian Flores, you would have to think, probably gets another head coaching opportunity somewhere. I'm not sure where that would be exactly, but you would have to think with his record and the way he kind of turned around that Dolphins team so quickly, you would think that Brian Flores gets a shop pretty soon. So we'll find out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys next time.